Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. Today we've got some preventive maintenance and a 200 hour service that we're gonna do on the DK4510 uh, made by Coyote. I've got it warming up uh, back here behind me. And as you can see from the intro, uh, I'm at like 199 hours, like 199.9 .9 or something like that. So we're right there at the 200 hour mark. I've got all the filters that I need. I've got some oil. Let's uh, get started on this and we're just gonna go through it today and show you what needs to be done. All right, so first up, let's just go over quickly all the things that uh, I purchased today and the things that you're probably going to need if uh, this is going to be your, uh, could be your 50 hour or could be your 200 hour um, coyote service. So from our local dealer in town, uh, Black Creek Tractor, I've got our oil filter. And if you've got a DK4510, that's gonna be your part number. Got the fuel filter. And anyways, that's gonna be your part number also for your fuel filter. We've got our um, air filter, which we have not changed since we've owned the, uh, owned the tractor. This is gonna be the first one based on the um, Based on the, the manual, I think a lot of people look at it and they think that they've got to do it at the 50 hour interval. But if uh, you really look closely, it, it just says to pull out and clean. And I think every 10th time, the t by the 10th time you've pulled it out and cleaned it, you should probably replace it. Um, anyways, on the 200 hour, it's gonna be a complete change out. Um, it's, it's good insurance, so. Uh, and then the last thing is gonna be the Hydraulic filter, there's your part number for your, there's your part number for your DK4510. And as far as lubrication goes, uh, I normally use the Rotella 10W30. It's not anything specific that uh, I like about it more than anything else. It's just what I've used in the past. Uh, Coyote, I believe, makes their own uh, engine oil. But if you look through your man manual, it'll kind of give you a description of uh, what you need. Uh, here in Florida, I go with the, the 10 w30 and uh, with it being a newer engine I don't think we need a thicker viscosity so uh, today I've got uh, Valvoline premium blue 15 w40 it is all that Napa had uh, but we used to run it and uh, the two dodges that I, that I used to have when we did oil changes on those so uh, I'm pretty happy with the Valvoline there's nothing against that I've got uh, for our grease we're gonna use a uh, Lucas red and tacky it's just a multi-purpose grease Roll of shop towels, uh, something that was really hard to find, nitro gloves. I guess because of the pandemic, not a lot of them are, are being sold for automotive people. But it was, I had to go to three stores to finally find a, a good deal on one. And then your uh, Coyote tractor manual. This will have all of the um, all the points in which you need to grease. This will have step-by-step uh, -step, uh, instructions as to what you're looking for. And um, a part of it you're gonna need is to make sure you're hitting all the grease points and um, location of your filters. If you if this is your 50, you're gonna need that to figure out exactly which filter needs to be, or where the filter is and, and uh, that needs to be changed out. Um, also on the 200 hour, I believe you're supposed to check toe in on the front. So that'll have a, a brief rundown as to how to do that toe in inspection and, to, and if it does need to be adjusted in or out it should be able to give you the rundown so we'll go over that when we get there all right so i've enlisted the help of chrissy she's behind the camera right now i'm gonna explain it uh to you guys as well as to her while uh she's filming so we're, we're at the back of the tractor and this will be your cap that sits on top of your uh your rear end or like your your pumpkin uh, this is the vent tube and uh when you pop this off or when you unscrew it this is going to be the area in which you're going to put your hydraulic fluid to uh, cap it off if you got to put more in. Um, but anyways, it, for this purpose today, Chrissy is going to be helping me to change out the hydraulic filter. I've just got a simple um, reducer coupling 
that's gonna go in on the end of our shop back. And I'm gonna put this right here inside of this opening, like so. Okay, that's kind of locked in just by the tension from the uh, this bottom of the plate right here, holding it down. Chrissy is going to hold it on that opening for me because I, I've tried taping it and I've tried doing a few other things. Every time I hit the vacuum, it just blows right off. Um, I think the suction just gets too much and with the tube being bent the way it is, it's just uh, causing problems. So I'm gonna have Chrissy hit the button and hold it down for me when I tell her to. I cracked it a little bit just to get some lubrication on, on my gasket. All right, Chrissy, go ahead and uh, turn that vacuum on and hold it down for me. Chrissy, shut it off. All right, guys, so there you have it. I've not found a video like this on YouTube at all, but um, that vacuum trick definitely works. I've never uh, done it this way before, but uh, you saw the amount of oil we lost. Most of it is what was inside the filter itself. I say oil, it's, hi it's hydraulic fluid, so, but most of it is what was in this uh, filter housing. Um, you got a little bit of a mess down here. I'm gonna wipe it clean just so the dirt doesn't get attracted and kicked up to it. But uh, for anybody with a Coyote who's got a uh, horizontal filter uh, setup, something, or a vertical, I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, this is gonna be the way to do it. Super less mess. Uh, the last time I did this without the vacuum, I just put the tractor up on an angle like you saw me do. And I filled I filled this container right here up. I filled this green container up, which probably holds at least two gallons. And um, I probably dumped another two gallons on the dirt, pretty much right where we are right now. So this is by far the better way to do things. All right, so the last step in your process of changing out the hydraulic filter um, is going to be to Get the tractor back off the ramps if you decided to do it the way that we did and then you're going to want to take a look at your vent hole or sorry uh your vent filler cap slash vent hole deal um make sure that the little tube on the end here so you can see that orifice make sure that's not clogged up with dust or uh, mud or anything like that just give it give it a couple good squeezes and these caps are plastic the housing that it goes into is obviously uh, gonna be like a cast steel, but um, it collects a lot of dirt whenever you screw it in or take it off. So get you a nice shop rag and clean it up and then get that thing back on the pumpkin as soon as you can. All right, so you're in your 50 hour service or your 200 hour service. You've just got the hardest part completed, which is gonna be your hydraulic filter. Oil is not gonna be, or hydraulic fluid is not gonna be a concern, providing that it's uh, still in good shape. You can take a look at your dipstick on the back once you're done, and you can top those fluids off. If it is a little low, you're probably good. Next step 
is going to be to change your uh, engine oil. And before we get too far ahead, I just wanted to talk to you guys about this, especially if you're doing your 50 hour. These tractors are four wheel drive. And what that means to you is that when the drive shaft for the front axle comes off the transfer case, it's got to split the oil pan. So when you get up underneath it and change them, you're not only going to have one bolt, but two bolts. Both of these have got to be pulled and drained to get all your oil out. If you just pull one, the volume inside the opposite is still going to be held there. It's going to take you a 17 millimeter. I've got one, a deep well on a breaker bar. Uh, these were put in by hand. I didn't use any kind of uh, torque wrench to do it, so they should be pretty easy to come out. I'm gonna knock this out real quick. While this is draining, we're gonna move on to the next part. First thing, first thing I'm gonna do here is gonna be the air filter. That's a real easy uh, pop the canister open, exchange it. Just look inside the canister real quick. And then second thing is gonna be our uh, fuel filter. Also want to check this right here too. Make sure that's not filled up with any kind of dirt or mud. Everything inside looks pretty good. So I, I've either got a different filter than what's supposed to be in here. Or I've sold the wrong filter. Yeah, there's no way in hell this filter is going to fit inside that housing. All right, this, this filter is going to go back. We're going to throw uh, this one in the truck to take with me. but I'm gonna grab a wrench and I'll pop the uh, oil filter off and get that swapped. I'm gonna clean up where all the oil dripped I'm going to slap on the, the new filter. On these, you're not going to fill them up in case you're in case anybody's wondering. Um, because they are a uh, horizontal filter, just like our hydraulic one, you, you can't fill them up. If you do fill them up, it's just going to dump out as you're trying to screw it on. So uh, get this on when you fill up your uh, reservoir and when you kick your engine on, uh, this should fill up when it's being primed. Well, I don't know what kind of black of engineering I've got myself into, but I've got a uh, fixed uh, red funnel that I've got going right down into the crank. And then I've got my second funnel that's kind of more flexible. I got that jammed in there and it's got a little pull right here. So we're going to see if this will work.
All right, so I've got about a quart left. I'm gonna pull our, uh, let's see. pull the dipstick for our oil. Get it cleaned off real good. We've got two hash marks. This will be your low with the bean at the end. So your low mark, high mark. All right, so after I checked it, I'm right at the high mark. So uh, keep in mind, when you, when you crank your engine up, you're gonna fill up that filter. So the uh, volume of the pan is gonna go down. That, that, uh, that mark is gonna go down. So run it for probably, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes once you've got everything done. And um, shut, shut the thing down, let it cool off a little bit. Pull your dipstick, wipe it, drop it, pull it again and then see where you're at. If you gotta add some more cool, if uh, you don't have to add some more, then that's cool too. All right, so I've, I've kind of reached the point where I'm in uncharted territory um, with the 200 hour. So I just broke open the book real quick and let's just, uh, let's just go down this here. So uh, runtime hours, we're looking at 200. I'm gonna go down, transmission oil filter, did that. We do not have uh, hydrostat in this, uh, this tractor, but if you do have a hydrostat capability, you're gonna do two of them, not just one. And that's gonna be it for here. Uh, front axle oil, we're, we are gonna check that today. And greasing, it doesn't say anything here, but I'm gonna go ahead since I'm hitting 200 every, every 10 hours with grease. So we're gonna do that anyways on the grease. Uh, wheel torque, wheel bolt torque. If you feel like you got some time, go ahead and check all your uh, your wheels. Make sure you don't have any loose ones. And on this page over here, so air cleaner element, we need to go get our swapped out before we can replace it. Right, it's not going to be a cleaning. It's it, this is going to be a replacing. Uh, fuel filter element check. We did that and radiator hose clamp so we're going to go take a look at that power steering hose and oil line we'll take a look at that and air intake i looked at it earlier but let's just go check it out one more time over there and looks like last page here 200 toe in right let me get it where i can 200 hour runtime toe in we're going to make an adjustment if we need to all right, so we got our our air housing here. Uh, hose is in good shape, clamps on tight. Intake, good shape, clamps on tight. Uh, housing's bolted down real well. We go up in here, investigate further. Connection here looks good. Hose clamps tight. Other hose clamp is tight. Nothing loose. It goes down into a little coupling here. Both hose clamps are tight. Coupling looks like it's good. Nothing worn. Then it goes right back in over here. And that's got a good connection too. So I'm happy with it. While we're here, we can clean this, uh, this grill front right here. Pull that out and blow it off or hose it down. The other thing we need to be cautious about is our inlets the little grill if you still got these in good shape right all that right there can be blown out that probably should be a preventative maintenance uh step that you do on your your 10 hour or your daily uh, wiping it down blowing it off making sure you don't have any huge punctures anywhere in them that might have uh, damaged the hose or something like that in here Okay, so all the grease fittings have been taken care of. You've got the front grease fitting that's down there. Can't really see it, but it, it pretty much goes into the axle where the frame rides in. And then you've got your second one up front right here. You're gonna have all of these fittings right here on your front end loader. 
they need to be done wipe them clean before you start don't put too much excess coming out right all these right here you're gonna want to knock out i squirted anywhere between five to twelve pumps it all depends on uh um what bearing i was greasing up all right so i've done my uh front axle fluid check and as you can see right here it's going to be a little uh low so i'm going to get some 90 weight sae oil uh to go ahead and, and just squirt a little bit in the front as insurance i don't see anything leaking down so i'm not sure where it went it might also be the angle i'm on but uh, like i said just for good measure i'm going to go ahead and get some we're going to squirt that in there uh front end to our uh, toe in adjustment that's also going to be your 200 hour uh, checkup you're going to measure the front of the tractor on the outside of the tread and then you're going to go to the back side of that tread and do the same exact measurement right here in your book it gives you a great schematic of how to do it and we're going to skip all these parts because we don't necessarily need that right now uh, we're going to skip to this one it says here front distance should be two to eight millimeters or 0.07 to 0.315 inches less than the rear distance if not adjust the length of the tie rod joint so i've written here in the sand i've got 59 and a half in the front and then i've got 60 inches in the back so we are out of spec based on uh, that booklet right there we're going to be out of spec by 0 0.2 uh 0 0.2 inches i think if the math is right 0 0.5 it needs to be less than 0.13 so yeah roughly uh 0.2 and some change or just under 0.2 of an inch if it was one inch i'd probably go ahead and make that adjustment because i'm not too far out um i'm gonna wait till probably the next hundred so it'll be the 300 um uh hour or the next oil change and i'll just remeasure it there again and we'll make that adjustment all right, well, if you made it this long into the video, I commend you. I really do appreciate you stopping by. If you know someone with a Coyote tractor, feel free to share this. Uh, post it up on forums, put it on Reddit, wherever you can, uh, just to get people uh, who do have a Coyote um, kind of more comfortable with doing these kind of hour, uh, hourly um, services. I, I got to figure out what it is at the local dealer. I want to say I remember it was like $350 to, just to do the 50 hour. So I can't imagine what the 200 hour is probably going to look like. It, it's probably going to be 400 bucks. I don't know, 500 bucks, depending on what part of town you're in and what state you're in. But this is super simple. Anybody can do it. The vacuum trick for the hydraulic fluid definitely makes things um, so much simpler. And to me, that's the most daunting task. Uh, I made a humongous mess and I hated myself for a long time for that. So vacuum trick is the way to go to solve that problem. Um, I really hope somebody learned something today and um, if you didn't I apologize let me know what I need to do better next time I do a service on my tractor I'm not a certified mechanic I probably just started the video off uh, with that information but uh, anyways it's you two who gives a shit so uh, Coyote tractors great things uh, great price point great machines I can't say anything uh, bad about them Hearst Equipment in Georgia, uh, give them a call. This is where I picked this one up at. They were great to me. Uh, they still are great to me with service after the sale. Uh, Dykes Hearst over there, third generation uh, tractor company. Definitely go give them a look. But uh, thank you guys again for joining us. Um, I really don't know how to end this, so bye-bye.